Hello and welcome to DevTest Solutions. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to use Identity and Access Manager when you're connecting to an existing LDAP server. So first up, what exactly is Identity and Access Manager? So this is a new feature that was introduced in 10.4 that manages authentication for all DevTest components, including Enterprise Dashboard and each registry in your environment. Because it's responsible for managing authentication, that means that it also needs to be the first component that you start up. So you can't access Enterprise Dashboard or an individual registry unless IAM is up and running first. So let's go ahead and take a look at this feature. To start IAM, I can either use the desktop icon, or I can navigate to the dev test installation directory, open the Entity and Access Manager folder, and then the bin folder, and there I'll find the executable for IAM. If you're on a Windows machine, you can also launch it from the Start menu. And once IAM is up, I can then launch the UI. And again, I can use the desktop icon or the Windows Start menu. I can also just open a browser and enter the URL directly. The default URL is localhost 51111, though that might be different for you based on where it's installed. And once that's up and running, I'm ready to log in. So I'll enter my username and password and click log in. And then IAM opens up to the general tab. And it's worth noting here that this tab includes a link to the DocOps space that takes you directly to the product documentation that's related to Identity and Access Manager. In this video, we're using IAM with an LDAP server. So the first thing that I need to do is configure my connection to this server. So to do that, I go to User Federation under the Configure menu. Now I can configure this connection in a couple of ways. To set this up manually, I just click Add Provider and then select LDAP. And here you can enter all of your LDAP information. A couple of quick things to note on this page. Required fields are indicated with a red asterisk. And if you have any questions about any of the fields, each field has a help icon that provides more information. You can also test your connection and your authentication before you finish up and click Save at the bottom of the page. The other way to configure your LDAP connection is by importing an existing XML file that contains the details of your LDAP authentication provider. If you happen to be upgrading from a previous version of DevTest, Identity and Access Manager automatically imports this information for you the first time that you start a registry. For this automatic import to work, you must have a valid authenticationproviders.xml file in your install directory. To demonstrate this process, I'm going to do the import manually, but as long as these files are present in your install directory, IAM will do this step for you. So to do this manually, I just go back to the User Federation page and click Import LDAP Authentication. If you're upgrading from a previous version of DevTest, the two files listed here should be in the installation directory of your previous version. If you did an in-place upgrade where you overwrote your previous version, these files should just be in your install directory. The Authentication Providers file stores the details for your LDAP authentication provider. The LDAP mappings assigns dev test roles to existing LDAP groups. I'm going to go ahead and import my LDAP files so I can select my Authentication Providers file. And then my LDAP mappings file. And click Import. Now back on the User Federation page, you can see that my LDAP information is showing up. And if I ever need to edit this for any reason, I can click Edit in the Actions column or click the ID to make my changes. On the Group Settings tab, you can define the specific LDAP groups that you want to pull into IAM. You can also map several default attributes back to your LDAP attributes. If you have an LDAP attribute that uses a value other than the default values listed here, you can map that LDAP attribute to the appropriate attribute in IAM. You can also assign dev test roles to LDAP groups from the Groups to Role Mapping tab. So I can pick an LDAP group, and then I can see the dev test roles that are assigned to that group. Now that we have that set up, let's take a look at our users. So to do that, I select Users under the Manage tab, and the first thing that you'll notice is that on the initial view of this page, no users show up you have to click View All Users. And now you might notice that the only users that are showing up are the default users for DevTest Solutions. 
That might seem odd, but it's important to note that this page does not show all users in your LDAP server. When a user logs into DevTest, a record gets written to the IAM database, and then the user shows up in IAM. But until the user logs in for the first time, you won't actually see them in this list. And I can demonstrate this by going to another browser and logging into DevTest Portal. So I'm going to go ahead and log in as Dev. Now if I go back to IAM and click View All Users to refresh the list, you can see that the user that just logged in is now showing up. If you want to see the details for a particular user, you can click the ID or click Edit in the Actions column. From the Details tab, you can edit the details for a given user. You can also use the Credentials tab to change a password. However, and this is important, any changes that you make in these two tabs are not written back to the LDAP server and don't actually impact the user's authentication because the user is authenticated against the LDAP server. So you should really only use these two tabs to review a user's information and make your actual changes in the LDAP server. You can, however, use the Role Mappings tab to assign roles to the selected user. To do that, you can select an available role and click Add Selected to assign it to this user. And I'll also point out that the Effective Roles list shows the roles that the user has inherited from mapped roles or groups. And from the Sessions tab, you can also see the active sessions for this user. As an administrator, you also have the ability to automatically log this user out of all sessions. And a couple other things I'll point out. Back on my list of users, there's also an Unlock Users button that unlocks any users whose accounts were temporarily locked, typically from too many unsuccessful login attempts. And there's also a search feature to make it easier to find a specific user. So now let's talk about creating and managing the roles that you can then assign to users. So if you click Roles under the Configure menu, the Roles page opens up and shows you a list of the defined roles. Just like your list of users, you can edit or delete existing roles. To add a new role, I just click Add Role. And then I can enter a name and a description for the role. I'm just going to enter a name and click Save. And you can see that my new role is listed here. I can also go back to my user federation to map this new role to a specific LDAP group. So I'm going to click User Federation and then click Edit, go to the Groups to Role Mapping tab, and here I can select an LDAP group, and you can see that my new role is now in the list of available roles, and I can assign that role to this group. Now you might have noticed that I created the role, but it didn't let me assign any permissions to it. And this is another very important point. Identity and Access Manager lets you control authentication for all of DevTest, but authorization is still handled through DevTest Portal. What that means is that you can add, edit, and delete roles in IAM, but the permissions for those roles are assigned through Portal. This provides the flexibility of defining different permissions for a role in different registries. So let's open up the portal to see what this looks like. So in DevTest Portal, I can select Settings, Access Control, and Roles. And here you can see the new role that I just created is showing up. And if I select New Role, you can also see that there aren't any assigned permissions for this role yet. On the left, you can see the available permissions. So I can define the permissions for this role by selecting a permission on the left and moving it to the list of assigned permissions on the right. I can also get more granular by expanding a particular permission and assigning a subset of permissions. And then I can click Save. Meanwhile, back in IAM, the last thing that I will mention is that you can manage sessions and events. And there's more information about both of those features in the DocOps space. And remember that you can get there by going back to the General tab and clicking Product Documentation. 
So that's a brief introduction to Identity and Access Manager. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for viewing it. For more detailed information about this product, click the information bubble in the top right corner to go to the CA Service Virtualization product page. From there, you can access product documentation, support or communities, and see the available learning paths. Mm -hmm.